Hey everybody, today we're going to learn the last section when we're dealing with fractions and this is going to be problem solving. Um, when we're doing problem solving, you have to remember the method that we use. First, we're going to read the problem to make sure that we understand what we're looking for. We're going to write down everything that's important that we know, find out what we're looking for, and then we're going to set an equation up, and then we're going to solve it. So the first thing we're going to do is look at this. Um, it's a word problem about a tailor making costumes for a play. So what we need to know is what is the information that we have to have in order to solve this. Let's see, he needs ma enough material for one large shirt and five small shirts. Okay, so that's what he needs. The large shirt has one and a half yards of material. The small shirt needs three-fourths of a yard of material. All right, that's important to us too. Then we see that the tailor has five yards of material and he wants to know, hey, do I have enough to make all of these shirts. So if he doesn't have enough, we need to know how much more he needs to go get in order to make the shirts. So that is what we're going to do and I'm going to go to the board so that we can work on this. Okay, what is the information that we know? We know that he needs one large shirt and five small shirts. One large five small. Okay, you want to write down that information. What else do we know? Well, we know that the large shirt requires one and a half yards of material. One and one half yards of material. The small shirt needs three fourths yards of material. Okay, then what else do we know? We know that he's got a total of five yards A total of five yards right now and we want to know does he have enough to get all this so how do we solve this problem well the first thing we need to do is find out how many yards all together if he needs just one shirt that's a large then he needs one and a half yards for that there's no extra work to do for that one but look right here at the next one. We have five small shirts. Well, if each one of the small shirts takes three-fourths of a yard, I need five times three-fourths of that yard. So we would have to recall our information on multiplying fractions. So we put a one under the whole number five, and then you look to see if there's anything that can reduce. Since nothing reduces, you do top times top, bottom times bottom. That would be 15 over 4. And because we're dealing with measurement, we want to make sure that we turn that back into a mixed number. So to turn that back into a mixed number, recall those skills. In order to turn this into a mixed number, you divide 4 into 15. So if I went up here and did this like on scratch paper, 4 divides into 15 three times, which makes 12. And that leaves me three left over. So that would be three and three fourths yards. Okay? So that's how much he needs for that. Now he has a total of five. So in order to find out the total number of yards that he needs, what do we do? Now we add. I'm going to add my one and a half yards plus my three and three-fourths yards to find out how many yards in all that he needs in order to make these shirts. So that would be one and one-half plus three and three-fourths. Now, remember that there are two ways that you can solve this problem. Um, one of the ways is to s add your whole numbers together and then do the fraction part. The other way to do it would be to turn them into improper fractions and do it that way. Um, I'm going to erase so that we can do it that way. Okay. So let's turn these into improper fractions because I think that's going to be the easiest route. So that would be 2 times 1 makes 2 and 2 plus 1 makes 3. So that would be 3 halves plus 4 times 3 makes 12. 
12 plus 3 makes 15. 15 fourths. Once you turn them into improper fractions, you want to find a common denominator. What's my LCD between 2 and 4? That would be a 4. Okay? Now remember, if you change the denominator, you have to change the numerator. So if I'm going to change my fraction from 3 over 2 to something over 4, what did I change it by? Well, 2 times 2 gives me that 4. So if you do the bottom times 2, you do the top times 2. So that would be 3 times 2 is 6. Over here on the other fraction, I already have the 4 that I need, so I don't need to make any changes, so he stays 15. So now you write the bottom, you collect the top, which would be 6 plus 15. What does that give me? 21. So I need 21 fourths yards. Well, you know, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because we're talking about yards. And when you go to the fabric store, you don't say, I need 21 fourths yards, please. You say, I need 2 and 1 fourth of a yard or 3 and a half yards. So what we need to do is change this 21 over 4 back into a mixed number. So that would be 4 divides into 21 five times, which makes 20, which leaves me 1. So 5 and 1 fourth yards. Okay? Now what did that just answer for me? This 5 and 1 fourth yards, oops, This 5 and 1 fourth yards right here is how much we need the tailor needs this much. Needs 5 and 1 fourth yards for the 6 shirts. Okay? That was the answer to the question that we had. Now, the second part of that was they said, okay, well, if he doesn't have enough, how much more does he need? Well, recall what we said. How many yards does he already have? He has five yards, which means how much more would he need? So, if he has five and he needs five and one-fourth, then he needs one-fourth of a yard more to make his shirt. So he doesn't have enough. He needs one-fourth of a yard. So he needs to go back to the store and get that much so that he can make a shirt. But logic should tell you this. When you go to a fabric store and you want to make a shirt, if you need three-fourths of a yard and you only have one-fourth, you don't want to piece it together. So go ahead and buy three-fourths so that you have extra. All right. We're going to do one more problem. And the other problem talks about the life expectancy of a coin. Now, versus a dollar bill. And you know that when you go to the U.S. Mint, they print money, they print coins, they print dollar bills. And so this question talks about how long do those things stay in circulation? Well, it says the life expectancy of a coin in circulation is 30 years. So a coin life is 30 years. Okay, that's important information. Then it says the life expectancy of a dollar bill. So we're going to write dollar life is one thirtieth, one twentieth, sorry, one twentieth as long as the coin. That means obviously dollar bills don't last as long as coins, mainly because they're made of paper, not of metal. So they don't last as long. Okay. So how am I going to find the life expectancy of this dollar? When it says I want 1 20th as long as the coin, this is multiplication. So this operation is use multiplication to solve. 
So I'm going to take 30 years, which would be 30 as a whole number over the number 1, times 1 over 20, because that's as long, 1 20th as long. Okay, then you want to reduce it if you can. Now let me show you. Both of these numbers have zeros in them. And in a previous module, we learned about dividing by 10, multiplying by powers of 10. When you divide by powers of 10, all you really have to do is cross off the zeros because 10 divided by 10 is 1. So the zeros divide each other out. And you're left with top times top, which is 3, bottom times bottom, which is 2, which is 3 over 2. Now, when we're talking about time and years, you don't say three halves years, okay? What you want to do is turn that back into a mixed number. So that would be two divides into three one time, which leaves one. So that would be one and one half years. So a dollar bill on average stays in circulation for one and a half years versus a coin, which is 30 years, okay? Now... We're done with the main module talking about fractions and we've talked about mixed numbers and whole numbers. Our next mod set of modules are going to talk about decimals, place value, add, subtract, multiply, divide, do word problems, order of operations, everything you can do with a whole number, everything you can do with a fraction, you can also do with the decimal. So that's our next task.